We're on. We're on, okay. Uh, hello, and thanks for tuning in. This is David Popiel with AIA Colorado, and today I have with me Marlon Blackwell, professor um, at the architecture department and the Dep architecture department head at the University of Arkansas and principal at Marlon Blackwell Architects. Uh, Mr. Blackwell has received numerous design awards. His work has been documented extensively, and he has taught as a visiting professor and lecturer at universities across the country. Mr. Blackwell will be presenting at the AIA Practice and Design Conference on Architectural Vernaculars. I would love to try and characterize and describe his work, but I fear it would be inadequate. Instead, I would encourage our viewers to take a look and research some of his projects, like the Keenan Tower House, the Gentry Public Library, and the Moore Honey House. The forms, massings, and materials all speak to Mr. Blackwell's attitude and approach towards architecture, one that addresses place on many levels. It's uh, with my great pleasure to be talking with him today. So how are you doing today, Mr. Blackwell? I'm um, doing good. Doing good. Staying cool. All right. I have uh, a couple questions here. So first, how does your local community and region influence your design? Um, well, I think in multiple ways. Uh, certainly, uh, each you know kind of architectural opportunity we have is uh, we consider unique, even though they may be in you know very similar places because you're you're, you're getting a, a different set of uh, challenges, uh, different uh, sensibilities with each. Uh, each client, and um, so as a result, it, what we've tried to do is become very careful listeners and careful observers of place, very attentive uh, to the qualities uh, inherent in, in each uh, place, and and also be looking for qualities that may be latent, that could be intensified through uh, the act of design, the act of, uh, of, of introducing architecture to the situation. Uh, so it's it's recognizing qualities and it's enhancing uh, qualities and intensifying uh, our relationship to place. So all that's a big part of how we generate ideas. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, whether, again, it's uh, urban or rural or suburban, uh, every, every scenario has its own uh, set of observations and those observations tend to be uh, you know biological geological but always cultural uh, in, in terms of how we engage the problem uh, so it's uh, both the source and the inspiration for much of our work okay so what do you see as opportunities for design your climate and community what what are the challenges, I guess? Well, I think one of the, the most, the greatest ones for us is uh, the lack of economic will. Uh, the idea that where I live, which is, is mostly, uh, its history has been somewhat hard scrabble, very self-sufficient. You know, people tend to be very pragmatic they, and frugal. Um, you know, I'm in the land of Walmart here. Uh, so it's a, a kind of even people who have the kind of economic liability can be very cautious. Uh, so that's a that's a big challenge for us, and it's also uh, has been a possibility for us as much as a limit at times because it, it creates its own set of constraints uh, that we have to respond to. And of course, that. Uh, informs us what we can do in a particular scenario. Uh, I think the other challenge for us is terrain. Uh, we, we are in the Ozarks, uh, that intersection of hills and valleys uh, that define the Ozarks. Uh, very tough to find a flat side around here. Uh, and the soils tend to be pretty marginal, uh, at times very spotty. Uh, so we're always very mindful of how we engage the earth. Uh, and, and the types of soils we work with. So those are those are challenges. I think the other thing is uh, at times can be uh, cultural, although uh, interestingly enough, Fayetteville, Arkansas is really defined by its post-war 
uh, modern architecture uh, more than anything in its past. With the uh, uh, legacies of Faye Jones, uh, Edward Durrell Stone, Warren Seagraves, uh, the whole Ozark modern movement, uh, there's a, a wonderfully diverse uh, mixture of uh, contemporary architecture that is unusual for a place that has, you know, until recently was relatively remote and relatively economically challenged. So that's a great thing that we have going for us out here. So that even though culturally, uh, well, I would say this, that culturally they're not burdened by the yoke of history. Uh, so because there's a rampant individualism here, uh, people may not know what they want, but they certainly know what they don't want. And that's what everybody else has. Uh, so they're willing to take some uh, risks uh, here, which I think is is, is, a, is a good thing. So that, maybe not the economic so, risks, <laughs> but certainly the you know uh, the other types of risks. That seems like you partially answered this, but what what would you say you love about this region that's um, inspiring? You can get things built, and it doesn't take half a lifetime. You know. To do it uh, there it's a it's a place of makers and so I love all the different uh, fabricators that we have here different craftspeople uh, we love working directly with them in the process of design uh, it has a great spirit of uh, possibility you know of some of the uh, largest companies in the world like Walmart and Tysons and JB Hunt are located here. Uh, so uh, there is, uh, uh, I would say, a, a strong vision towards the future, which is good. We have the education of uh, the university, uh, that, that diversity of thinking that comes with that in this community. So, and, and we do have our, our history, but uh, I find it less rooted in buildings and probably more rooted in in the crafts, uh, in music. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty a pretty amazing place in which to, to work in. And it certainly is a place that allows for the possibility of the new. Uh, I, I, I think it has a, a, some uh, legacies that, that bear evidence to that. So you you. Uh, it's also uh, I would like to add. It's also really beautiful. Yeah, I'll just throw that in. I, I attended school in St. Louis and I was able to travel a bit around Arkansas and I've been to Fayetteville and I would agree with you. It's a beautiful country. Um, so your your history. You uh, I think you grew up in the Philippines and lived in a variety of places, and you sort of transplanted to Arkansas. So what what brought you there? You said that you were attracted because you could get things built. Um, is there more, and, and what's keeping you there in Fayetteville? Yes. Well, I think uh, I'm, you know, I was originally from the South. My family's from Alabama. I grew up in, in a military family where we did move around a bit, born in Germany, lived for a while in the Philippines, Florida, Colorado, Montana, just kind of all over. But uh, I got my undergraduate education at Auburn University in the South. I spent time in Louisiana, uh, worked living in Boston for a long period of time, about five years, lived in Italy for a year. Uh, and I think I finally got to the point that in order to make my way uh, through architecture on my terms, uh, that I needed to find... Uh, perhaps a relationship between teaching and practice uh, where I could practice what I preach where there would be opportunities uh, and I saw that in particular through the work of E. Faye Jones who taught at the University of Arkansas and also had a nationally renowned practice uh, at that time he had just won the AIA gold medal back in 1990 so 1992 what he was demonstrating to me was that you could make architecture at the highest level anywhere and in any place and at any any project type. And 
to me, that was an inspiration because, you know, having come out of the, the Boston kind of New York scene uh, in the mid to late 80s, uh, I realized that while there was a great wealth of talent there and possibility as well, that, you know, the possibilities for architecture can't just be limited to one coast or the other, east or west and, you know, Chicago in between or something, that there's a whole vast area of the country that has a strong uh, history design. Uh, and part of that is that you, there are opportunities to, to, to make things, to, to get things built in a timely way. Uh, it's, it's no less challenging than trying to work in the great urban centers. Uh, but that was really primarily it's the opportunity to come here, teach and practice. Also, the dean that brought me here at the University of Arkansas guaranteed me commissions if I came. So the university here has always been very supportive of creative activity, uh, and they treat that, uh, treat myself as an integrated scholar uh, who allows practice and teaching uh, that have to kind of feed off of each other and have a high level of discourse. Uh, so I couldn't have accomplished a, a lot without their support uh, as well. So that's why I'm here. That's why I stay. Although I do enjoy opportunities. I'm teaching a studio at Cornell. Right now I do a lot of um, every other year of a visiting studio at another institution uh, just for the, the thrill of it all, I guess, to uh, share the discourses we're working on with other institutions, but also to allow those institutions to use uh, my own teaching as well. So, um, on, a, on a different note, the, a lot of your projects, you utilize materials in very sort of unique ways, and to that end, do you have... Um, I guess, are you influenced? Would you say you're influenced by the local material palette? And then do you have favorite materials? And how does sort of climate and construction sort of play into all of that? Well, um, again, I don't know that we have a real strong tradition of typologies here or ways of constructing that are distinct in the ways that we might find, let's say, in the desert or New England, or, or that sort of thing. Uh, so what we sort of feed off of are, yes, the vernaculars, but also emerging vernaculars, uh, things as, uh, uh, you know, prosaic as a uh, uh, semi-truck container or a trailer home or an RV vehicle. Uh, all of that sort of plots and jetsam that you, you find in the built environment uh, Act as sources for inspiration, not only form, form, but also for material logics. Uh, the way it developed in the kind of tectonic language that incorporates metal skins, uh, light gauge framing, uh, local woods, things like cypress and white oak, uh, and uh, plywoods, uh, kind of everyday sort of materials uh, that you can use in the sophisticated material. Uh, logic that uh, transcends power. In other words, it's the logic that comes first that helps one reveal the aspects of form, and then it's the material itself, which given the limit to economics that we're dealing with, uh, almost always local in some form. So, uh, locally constructed, certainly. With the exception of maybe metal panels that might come from the outside, but they're prefabricated they're just detailed or used in a very specific way. So we often make more hybrid tectonics, off-the-shelf uh, uh, items as well as custom items. We kind of combine this uh, to get a, uh, this overall uh, sort of richness of what we do, but it's a strategy that, you know, scrimps on some parts of the project that is word as in others to, to get the, the right kind of expressive character that we look at. So how would you say that your uh, architecture practice has changed in the past five years? The, the theme of the 
practice and design conference is the new normal. Would you? Oh yeah. What? Uh, yeah, I've been avoiding. I've been avoiding that question. You guys keep asking about that, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the new normal is to me is just whatever's going on today. I mean, if if you're not evolving and adapting to the uh, changing, you know, uh, discourse and the changing uh, factors in the economy and in the, uh, culture, I, I think you uh, the old normal can never, you know, be the new normal. I mean, it's it's, it's what is, and, and that's how you deal with it. So I de- tend not to be very idealistic about that. Uh, I will say that the when I started my firm, uh, I kind of modeled it after Faye Jones, which is a, a small, uh, team-driven studio environment where everybody does everything from uh, managing projects to answering the phone. Uh, and we don't market. We don't uh, chase work. Uh, you do whatever comes through the door. And you use your work as your calling card. You don't, you don't, you don't get yourself out there. It's for the mouth. Uh, that began to change, I think, with the advent of the downturn in the economy. Uh, and phones start ringing and people quit walking in. It's like, okay, what do we, what do, we do? So for the first time, we started allowing ourselves to team up with other firms. We started doing RQs, RFPs. We, uh, we did a whole, a whole portfolio to make it more... Uh, uh, with more of a narrative and more about who we were to get our name out there. We changed our website and we moved our offices to the downtown square to a facility that we uh, renovated uh, for a client. So we moved into this office building that we're currently in. So that became our calling card. I built my own house. Uh, It's another kind of calling card. So just a, a, a variety of tactics that fed an overall strategy of being uh, more business-centered and also moving away from the residential market as our sole source uh, and into a more public realm, uh, civic architecture, commercial, more com- some commercial architecture, but interested really in public architecture uh, and changing scale and proving that we could be one of those firms that could make a successful transition from doing smaller, uh, highly crafted work to larger scale work uh, that would maintain the kind of level of quality and edginess that that we like to see in our work. And I think we've begun to do that. I mean, it was a tough transition, but it, that change in the business model has begun to bear fruit. Uh, in the last couple of years. Um, you, you touched on this a bit before in uh, one of the, your earlier answers, but you expand on it. What was the influence of Faye Jones on your practice? I think primarily for me, I, I mean, I never, uh, you know, Faye is Faye, so I never, my interest in Faye, great respect for the work, but I wasn't interested in following in the footsteps and doing Faye's work. I mean, Faye does it best, and uh, there are a few people that have tried to follow, you know, directly in the footsteps that have done particularly well or are that successful uh, if they haven't found their own voice. So my interest in him was more uh, more in terms of ethics and, and principles, first principles, uh, you know, his attitude about materials, uh, about the response to site, uh, all of those really align with my take on things philosophically. So I found great inspiration in that. Also, the idea of the small firm doing great work at the highest level. Uh, I, you only have to visit Thorn Crown Chapel in Eureka Springs to understand what I mean by that, but it is work at the highest level. Uh, so that was an inspiration. And I think the other was this, and I asked him this when I was starting my, 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 my firm, is I asked him how he was able to maintain a consistency in his work, in the body of work. He practiced for nearly 60 years. 
And I was like, how did you do that? And his answer was very direct and simple. He said, well, I just decided that I would end my firm uh, the, the way I began the firm. Uh, uh, let me back up a minute, because I got that, I got that backwards. I, 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 I sometimes I plug this up, but it was, I want to, I want to start my firm the way I want to end it. Is that right? Oh, you're going to edit this, right? Or is this all off? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> I got to figure a little some stuff out here, but I'll try to. Okay. Well, I think you start the firm the way you want to end it. Right. So I think the message here for him was that you don't wake up at 50 and decide you're going to do good work. Yeah. So there's no bread and butter. There never was any bread and butter in this firm. There's no bread and butter here. Uh, every project is treated uh, in a very particular way uh, and has its own opportunity uh, to arrive at the status of architecture in the fullest sense of it. And so that was a great inspiration for me is that, you know, we've had lots of opportunities to do things just for the money in New York, just to get by, and we, we've avoided that uh, every step. All right. So as tempting as it might have been, <laughs> and we've paid a price for that. I thought, you know, because uh, you know, there's no one here that's fabulously wealthy or uh, could stand up and speak highly of their business model. You know, as the way, as a, as an example per se, uh, a shining example of how to create wealth. But at the same time, uh, it, most everybody here sleeps pretty good at night. Right. I think um, we've got a couple of sort of quick questions here to kind of, on a, on a lighter note, I suppose. So I'm going to ask you some questions Ooh, here. And just, all right, I was getting too serious there. Okay. <laughs> it's, no, <laughs> um, it's just a little something different, I suppose. Um, so what is your favorite word? My favorite word? Yeah. Well, I don't, you could probably review this interview and find it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> My my favorite word. That's interesting. Relative to architecture, I think just a favorite word it doesn't have to be relative to architecture. Could it be two words? Yes. Expressive character. Um, what is your least favorite word or words? Always, never. Um, what I hate always. On that. I always hate always and never. <laughs> what sound do you love? Always, always and never. I, I don't, I don't like hearing those words because they, they tend to be exclusive, uh, and I like to try to be more inclusive. Uh, what sound do you love? What sound? Yeah, do I love. Wow. Uh, I love the drag on a on a on a fishing reel. If you hear the drag, things are good. The sound of the drag on a reel, on the rod and reel, as you poke the fish, and it's probably pretty good. I like that sound. What sound do you? Big trout. Big day. What's that? What sound do you hate? Uh. A kind of nasal whine from anyone. Uh, what is your that follows with some kind of negative uh, you know, commentary on something that I'm, I'm not interested in? What profession other than architecture would you like to attempt? Would like to attempt? Yeah. Or or succeed in? <laughs> Mm. Uh, Your call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ah, that's a, that's a well. You know, maybe to, fan, uh, to fantasize about would be like a professional guide in some incredible wilderness or something. You know, discovers you know lost extinct species of animals or something. It's, you know, a kind of discoverer or explorer would be kind of cool. 
What profession would you what's his, rate, what's his interview rating? Do you have a rating on it? I don't think there's a rating. I think we're all professionals, hopefully. <laughs> oh, great. Well, that's, that's PG, professional guidance required. Uh, okay. Um, what, what, what was your question? What profession would you not like to do? Oh, my God. Well, that's a long laundry list. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I kind of would... I would hate to be a politician. I mean, I, 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 I understand the value of politics, but, you know, the idea of trying to empower people that you really don't give a shit about is, is, that's a difficult thought. That's a difficult deal. And I find most politicians to be that way. I think they're, a lot of them are, are uh, uh, how would you say, they are, it's the right word, not confused, but they struggle with that. Right. Um, and to the final question, it's, if heaven exists, would you, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive? What took you so long? <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be good to hear. <laughs> well, and rather that you're here already, dash. Um, that, that gets us to the end of the interview here. So I'd like to thank you again okay. very much for taking the time you, to speak with us. And you bet. Uh, everyone here over here is very much looking forward to your speech at the conference and um, again thank you very much absolutely, absolutely. and uh, I look forward to it and uh, it really architecture is hard loving fun so look, look forward to sharing some thoughts with you alright sounds good thanks again alright man take it easy have a good day you too bye bye